Vinyl Community, Jeff back again. It's time for the Perfect 10. What are we up to? Part 5 here. Perfect 10. Reminder, if you haven't seen any of the previous ones, this is basically an idea I took from Rick over Rick and Records that I've continued going with. And we're up to number 5 now. All I'm doing is pulling every 10th album. I'm going across my collection and say every 10th album I'm pulling until I have 10 of them. So basically 10 out of 100 and I'm showing you what we got. It's a way to revisit things that maybe we haven't looked at in a while. Maybe giving me a reason to pull out some older records that haven't gotten a lot of love recently. And, and giving them a spin and things like that. So it's been really fun to see some of the random stuff that comes up. Of course I see some of them as they come up. But a lot of them I just kind of grab and drop. So some of these may be things that are, wow I haven't seen that in a while. But anyway, so yeah, let's get into this. It's just fun. It's just fun stuff. Hopefully you enjoy seeing some of the random stuff that falls out of the collection here. John Alafonte, On My Way to the Sun. John Alafonte, vocalist for Kansas at one point for a couple song albums, done a lot of solo albums. This one came out a couple years ago. Absolutely love it. If you like uh, AOR, hard rock, Kansas type of music, little proggy elements here and there, you, you're going to really dig this. I mean, John Alafonte is just one of the... All, most awesome sweetest voices that makes anything sound great and he's always got you know top-notch musicians and great stuff and this is an album that just came out he had an album that came out uh for record store day recently which i picked up and i showed that it was it would have been uh it was the one after this but again just more great stuff i'm gonna show you a whole lot here nice colored vinyl this is a, a vinyl reissue from a couple the album came out a handful of years ago and then they released some vinyl just a couple years ago you can see my copy is autographed by john lafonte no i did not meet him but uh as part of the record sales there were a handful that got autographed and i got one of them so there you go and then we move them uh from that elefante into this elephant into this e uh, the Dark Command by Exciter. Exciter, one of my favorite thrash bands of the day back in the 80s. Loved uh, Dan Bueller's vocals. He left. They got a new vocalist. That's where this falls into. They kind of came back in the 90s and started putting out stuff. Much more aggressive. You know, I would say borderline, you know, death type stuff. Whereas uh, the earlier stuff with Dan Bueller, his vocals were aggressive, but not as aggressive as these. So the music is quite a bit heavy. The, 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 the sound is quite a bit heavier. Now, Dan went on after he left Exciter. He's done some other things, but years later released an album called Beeler. And I'm like, wow, you know, he sounds like this very, very much more aggressively in his vocals, very much more extreme. So even he changed a little at that point. But that album, there's a handful. I think there's only one Exciter album of that era that I do not have yet on vinyl. Um, I'm just a big fan of all this stuff, so I grabbed that. Oh, here's one. I didn't, didn't see this come up. Extreme. This is that reissue that came out not too long ago. And I, and I admit, I in the 90s, when this band came out, I didn't pay as much attention to them. So I had never had this album before. And so I thought, well, you know, I like them. I like their stuff that I've heard. So when it came out, when it was reissued, I bought it. <laughs> and like so many other people, when I listen to it, I'm like, wow, that's just cheese factor. There's so much in this album lyrically that's so cheesy. But, you know, it's a great album for the era. It just did not hold up very well compared to some of their other stuff. So, fun stuff there. Oh, okay, cool. War for the World, Fierce Heart. This is the, so Fierce Heart put out an album in the 80s, like one and done. Had Rex Carroll on guitar, who later went on to do amazing work in bands like White Cross and, and other projects over the years. And so then the band got back together in a couple years ago and they put out this most of the original members at least rex was there i think some of the other guys from the original 80s band were there and this album just blows me away it's just solid hard rock and metal that you would expect from you know from that time era they didn't you know more modernized but yeah great stuff and of course they did reissue this on vinyl which was great check them out there's a video for this just i mean if you like that melodic metal of the 80s and 90s it's just going to be right in that sweet spot so love that oh okay this is great moving further into the s we got flying colors this is second flight live this is a live album there's what three four albums here flying colors super group steve morse from deep purple dixie dregs all that on guitar neil morse on keyboards and singing mike portnoy on drums uh, it's just everybody in the band is somebody famous um you know steve morse casey mcpherson on vocals Anyway, it's uh, 
one of my favorite bands. They put out so much great stuff, and what they've done basically is every time they put a studio album out, then about a year later they put a live album out in a studio and a live. Because it's a part-time band, so they go back and forth. They do tours. They record them. Um, because every band, every member in the band has other projects that they work with. And so, um, yeah, they've had three studio albums and about as many live albums. So, but yeah, love their stuff. Was glad to have gotten this because I got when by the time I got on board with buying vinyl, I had to go back and catch up on some of these ones that were released. And so I got that, uh, that one, I believe is one of the ones I got at a great price. All right. Fort Knox. Now, I admit, I don't know a whole lot about this band. I bought this and a trip that I went, went to a thrift store. I did a big video on this down at an antique store when I went down to uh, North Carolina a mm, year and a half ago now. And I just picked up a lot of stuff that looked hard rock. And that's what it is. It's kind of like I just like a, a hard rock in early 80s, late 70s, early 80s. Uh, turns out I asked the lady at the store, she said, yeah, they were put in there on consignment, basically. Um, some guy who has like 10,000 records and his wife said, you got to get rid of some. And he cleared out a bunch. And I think I bought most of them. I mean, the stuff that I wanted, it was just a lot of obscure, hard rock and metal. And I'm like, I'm going to buy it all. So great prices. And this was one of them. Just some great, solid, hard rock there. All right. Oh, okay, cool. Spaceman by Ace Fairly. Ace Fairly continued to churn out uh, solo projects. And this is the one right in the middle there. Um, he's had an album, I think, uh, two after this. But, um, you know, he, he did his stuff in the early days after leaving Kiss. And then a little bit of law in there. And then started coming back with uh, albums like this. So it's Ace Frehley. It is what it is. You either love it or you love it. So I love it. Everything by Ace Frehley. So there you go. Great stuff. Spaceman pulls in there. All right. Here's a weird one. There you go. Um, Marty Friedman, Tokyo Tapes, uh, Tokyo Jukebox 3. Um, I don't know if the other Tokyo jukeboxes are on vinyl. They might be, but this one was on Amazon. I had it at my wish list, and it dropped to a reasonable price. Two record set. Marty Friedman, you know, is in Megadeth. He was in did a lot of Shredder albums back in the '80s, stuff like that. And then he disappeared. And went to like, went to Tokyo, went to Japan, and has done a lot of stuff from there. A lot of instrumental stuff. A lot of other projects. And the Tokyo jukebox series is again some instrumental stuff that he's done and i love instrumental stuff that he's done and so when this came out and uh the price dropped for this i grabbed it like i said i don't know if the other two are or, or maybe they just haven't dropped in price but um so i pick up what i can when i can i still don't have his first solo album on shrapnel i don't think i got the jason becker one him and jason becker did some stuff together too in cacophony which i think i have one of those two albums so yeah, big Marty Friedman fan, so that's going to be in there. Oh, there you go. Take a bite by Girl School. Where did I get this from? Girl School. I, have, I only have like maybe one or two Girl School albums. Band from the 80s. All-female band from the UK, I believe. Anyway, so they, you know, have done a lot of stuff. You got Motorhead and Girl School have done some stuff together. You know, just one of the one of the all-female bands back in the day. You had Girl School. You had Rock Goddess. Um course later you had vixen things like that so you know just showing that the girls can rock and hard rock it as well as the guys and this is one of the bands that uh, was one of the early bands back in the day i mean you know, of course we're talking pat post runaways but still um one of the bands in the 80s that really kicked it off girl school i don't have enough of their stuff on vinyl that's just what i happen to pick up and the last one here buy a thread by government mule i would be not surprised if i find another one of government mule in the next batch because there's probably so many government mule records in my collection that i have to have more than enough to get through two of them showing every 10. so maybe maybe this is kind of in the middle so we'll see yes I absolutely love them they have a brand new album that just came out i have not picked up yet and um i just love all of their stuff and i have missed seeing them live twice they've come close by and i keep kicking myself but one day i want to go see them Warren Haynes and Company, just uh, you know, great band. I just love it. Laid back at times, blues. The last album was a little more bluesy than I cared for, just because it was a lot of cover type stuff of classic blues. It was really kind of, really blues based. I really kind of like their more original stuff. It's a little more upbeat blues uh, material, kind of that bluesy feel. And the, the new album, I believe, is. I've heard mixed reviews. It's kind of a return to that, but they say the mix and experimental stuff in there but i listened to some of it online and i thought it sounded fine so maybe it gets into some weird stuff they've had some weird stuff one of their albums i'm not as big of a fan of it it's really weird but this one i'm a real fan big fan of great stuff 
Government Mule, one of my favorite bands that I just absolutely love their flair. So anyway, that's it. Just some fun stuff. Ten more albums uh, going from the D's into the G's. And that'll be it for this one. I'll see you later. Rock on and rock hard.